All right, everybody, welcome to Red Balloon Bookshop. My name is Angela Whited, and I'm the events coordinator here at Red Balloon. We are, if you don't know, a uh, children's and teen interest bookstore. We've been kicking it here for 33 years now, since 1984. Um, so welcome. Thank you for coming out to support our local independent bookstore. We're owned by a person who's here. Um, putting chairs out. Uh, so thank you for buying books from us. That's awesome. That's what helps make events like this possible. Without further ado, we'll get started. Um, the first perso person I'm going to introduce to you is Rachel Mueller um, from Green Card Voices. So let's give a nice warm St. Paul welcome to Rachel. <laughs> We're all just going to come up here. Um, thank you guys for coming this evening. Um, like Angela said, my name is Rachel Mueller, and I am the program associate with Green Card Voices. Um, so first of all, thank you to Red Balloon for having us. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Angela. It's awesome to be in this space. This is beautiful. This might be one of the most beautiful bookstore that we've had a book reading at, so that's awesome. So I work with Green Card Voices, and Green Card Voices is a nonprofit based in Minneapolis. And our mission is to record and share the stories of immigrants in order to build bridges between the immigrant community and the non-immigrant community. And then we do that through storytelling. Um, so we have recorded over 300 stories of folks from over 100 different countries since um, our beginning, which was just about five years ago. Uh, we started recording youth stories, though, in 2016. Uh, we recorded 30 stories from students from Wellstone High School, which is an all-immigrant public high school in Minneapolis. And we sat down with them in our recording studio, and we listened to them tell their stories. And after three days of recording, it was like, oh my goodness, these stories are amazing. I mean, every story is amazing, but really, these youth stories just had, just floored us. So we talked with their teachers and we're like, How, what else can we do with these besides just having these video narratives? Um, so our website has all of our videos online that you can watch. Uh, and we thought, you know what, let's make a book. Americans really love to read. How else can we uh, promote these short stories and share these stories, but let's, let's do it through books. Um, and so the Green Card Youth Voices Immigration Stories from a Minneapolis High School was born. Um, and the process that that happened in was pretty unique. Um, and it has been replicated now in Fargo, North Dakota, and just most recently in St. Paul with these guys here. Um, and that process looks a little bit like this. So we, we have the interview. You sit down with the kids, um, or with the students, with the adults, and we ask them the same six open-ended questions. And the idea is that you get a portrait of a life um, from where you were born, what that country was like, um, to, wh to you why, why you're here now, and what you contribute, and everything in between. Um, so that's a little bit about our process. Um, if you have any more questions for me, come talk to me afterwards. Because um, really, I'd like to get started tonight. So our introductory speaker is going to be Regina Santiago. Uh, so Regina was one of the first adults that we recorded um, in our stories. So we're really glad to see our storytellers you know, come back and participate in different ways. Um, Regina is from the Philippines originally. Uh, moved to Indonesia when she was young, and so has kind of, you know, a multiple-stepped immigration story. Um, she came to the United States in 2004, yep, um, and then became a uh, citizen in 2014. Yes, so that's, that's a little bit about her story. Um, currently, she's a teacher at St. Paul um, Academy and Summit School. Um, so we'll have Regina. <laughs> Thank you. It's my honor to be here with A.A. Christ and Yomi Yu as an educator, but more importantly as a fellow immigrant. At this time more than ever, teachers like us are looking for classroom resources to deepen understanding of the immigrant experience. That's certainly the case for me, but I've also been looking for something else. At this time more than ever, I've also been looking for signs of hope, points of light, Thing that helped me keep going and let, let me know that we're all going to be OK. So in this book, I found all of those things. Um, Green Card Youth Voices is both a useful tool and a well of hope for me. Empathy has become something of a buzzword recently, and for good reason. As a teacher, especially of young children, I consider teaching empathy to be one of my biggest responsibilities. But at times, I've seen empathy misused a little bit to teach this notion that we're not so different after all, so I should be nice to you. 
But in my classroom, I try to teach students that differences of all kinds are okay and beautiful, and that we're not all just like each other, and that's a good thing. Some of us ha like Cheez-Its, and some don't. <laughs> Our hair and skin are different colors. Some of us speak this language, and some of us speak this other language. While there's no denying our common humanity, I believe the ability to sit and live with these, these differences is how we'll dismantle stereotypes and accept each other for who we really are. So I hope that tonight's reading will broaden our concept together of empathy. As you hear and read these stories, I hope that your heart will be open to each storyteller, not just when there are similarities, but also differences. It's good to find common ground, but it's not enough. To borrow from the poet Rainer Maria Rilke, we must learn to love the distance that makes it possible to see each other whole against the sky. To A.A. Kristen Yomiyu, thank you for being generous enough to share your stories. To everyone who's here to listen, thank you for doing so with an open heart. The America that we hold so dear that I dreamt about and made my home all those years ago, and the America that we want for our children is here in all of us tonight. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is A.A. Win, uh, and I was born in a refugee camp in Thailand. However, m both of my parents were born in Burma and later they moved to Thailand because of the wars. When my parents first moved to Thailand, they knew nobody and finding places to live was not easy for them. But five years later, things were changing and getting better than before. And that's when my mom started to open the store. My mom sold many things, such as alcohol, snacks, vegetables, and other things, too. And my mom also sold curries because there are a lot of people who go to work early uh, if they didn't have time to cook so they can buy. And my dad was a farmer. He grew many different kinds of plants. Sometimes we will sell them, and sometimes we will share them to our neighbors. I love li living in refugee camp because there were a lot of fun things you can do and many places you can go and play. I often went to waterfalls and forests. While I was in the forest, I, I would hunt the birds. I would go there when I felt born. People who live in the camp got free foods such as rice, beans, fish paste, oil, and coals. And once a month, we got free clothes too. The amount of food we got depending on your family members. If you have more people, then you got more food. And there were many kinds of songs that you can listen in Thailand. There were Korean, Burmese, Thai, and American songs. But I only, I only listened to Korean and Burmese songs. And there were games and sports that I used to play with my friends. We played jumping rope, five or seven rocks, and volleyball. When I was young, my parents worked hard for me and my sisters. They supported us by working hard, and no matter it's raining or sunny, they sacrificed themselves. They wanted, to, they wanted us to be successful like others, so they sent us to school. In Thailand, every student needed to pay to go to school. The higher grades you are, the more you have to pay. Sometimes, my parents can't even afford it. And if you fail the classes, you have to repeat them again. Some teachers uh, will hit you with the stick if you fail them class. And some teacher will let you do 100 squats and some teachers let you run around school <laughs> seven times. <laughs> <laughs> and you can use your cell phone in the school or during the class. If the teacher caught you, they will hold on to it the whole day. When I was 12 years old, my parents got divorced, and, and that's when everything started to change. The, bin, the businesses went down and my mom couldn't pay for school anymore. I felt really sad and I was crying, but there, were not, there was nothing I can, do for, I can do for my mom. 
And in 2012, my mom sent me to my sister's, my sister, which is in Bangkok. Mama, my mom sent me there to work, and my sister was already there. They worked there five years before me, and now they have to work with me again. We work at the factory called KFC. Uh, my sister and I work in the same factory, but we were in different places, and we did different jobs. Uh, my job was to cut chicken meat. The factory was big, and many different kinds of ethnic groups worked there. We worked there about a couple of years, and I made a lot of friends. In about 2014, my mom called my sister and said that we need to come back so we can all go to the United States. My mom wanted to go to the United States in 2009, but there were some problems that we can't fix. Uh, that's why it's taking, it's taking long. Uh, my dad was not interested in going to another place. He didn't want to go then. That's why it took so long. However, in 2014 July, we left without him. Before we left, uh, there were many steps that we had to go through. First, we got interview, and the interviewers asked us a lot of questions in Thai. But there was interpreters for us, but the question that they asked was difficult and tricky. And it took us about three days to finish. When this was done, we left. We rode the buses to get to the airport. Before we got to the airport, we stay, stayed in hotel about two days. The hotel and food were so amazing. After that day, we left to the airport. When we arrived to the airport, I saw many places and they were so big. When I was on the plane, I felt nervous and my entire body was shaking. And I was asking myself, what would I do if American people talk to me? But guess who I have to stick with? It was American guy. At first, I thought I would have to stick with my mom and my sisters. Meanwhile, I felt like I, I wanted to use the bathroom. <laughs> I, I was so funny at that moment, and I can't even control myself laughing when I think about it. <laughs> and I really wanted to go, and I asked myself again, should I ask the flight attendants? But I didn't know how to speak English, and I don't know how to ask. I just have to sit on my seat three days without using the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> when the American guy talked to me, I just ignored him because I didn't know what he's saying. And then, is he trying to help me? I didn't know. <laughs> However, when I arrived to Minnesota, it was summer and I felt so strange seeing that, seeing what I have never seen before. And everything's different, everything's was different from my country. The buildings were very tall, and there were a lot of cars driving on the streets, people, houses, and even the foods were different. At that time, we knew nobody besides a friend of my mom. They had to help us because we didn't know what to do or where to go. They knew things better than us because they had been here five years already. First, we rented an apartment in Roseville, but we still live far from my my mom friend. They live in a house with many kids. Our apartment was nice, but it was too expensive, and there were a lot of bad bugs. <laughs> we lived there only a year, then we moved to my mom friend's house. We lived there and follow the rules. We have to pay, but not too expensive. But later, we moved to another apartment that we already know. Uh, we have to move because there are too many people in, in the house, plus our family. The apartment that we are living now has all current people except a few Hmong groups. I didn't like Minnesota at the first time because I didn't know about it. But later, I started to like it, and I was excited to be here. I, was, I wanted to go to the tall buildings that I have never been. I remember when I went to the Mall of America with my mom friend, I was riding a roller coaster and it was so high and I got scared. <laughs>
And after a few days later, we went to Valley Fair with them again. This time, the rides were more higher, and I got more scary. <laughs> <laughs> On the other day, we, we would go to parks, Zoom, and movie theaters. Uh, after staying home two weeks, I got a letter that said I have to go to school at Leap High School. Leap was not my first school. My first school was in Roosevelt, and it cost Fairview and Tolentip High School. When I first started school in Fairview, I speak no English, and I have no friends. The teachers were nice and kind. They helped me and encouraged me not to be scared on what you do. They say, be confident and brave. After I moved to Leaf, I didn't feel scared at all. I feel like I can do it, and I'm going to do it. And my English was getting better after moving to Leaf. I made a lot of friends, and I sometimes learn their language, and they learn mine. On the weekend, I would hang out with my friends, and I would watch a lot of movies, such as Korean drama, animated movies, horror movies, and funny movies by Mr. Bean. <laughs> And sometimes I will take the bus or train, go shopping, to go shopping. Next year, I will be graduating from LEAP, and I feel so grateful to my parents and teacher who have supported me and given me all the good advices. After I graduate, I will work for three years to save money, then I will go to five years college. My dream was to be an interpreter so I can help other people and immigrants. Thank you. My name is Chris, and I was born in Burma. When I was one month old, my parents moved to Thailand. I stayed in Thailand for 13 years. I went to school there from kindergarten to fourth grade. Then I came to, then I came to US. When I was 30, I was a camp. I was in a camp in Thailand. My family was all together in the camp. We are all still together today. There are five people in my family, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, and me. I had a lot of friends in, in, in the camp. We were going to school together, go to the river and swim, and play, and play together. Some day, some day came, came to US too. In the camp, you could live, but you, are, you always need permission to you always need permission. You will ask the government to give it, or you will ask the government to go into the city and they will say yes or no. They could leave, you could leave to work or go to school. I had to work to school. School start at 8.30 a.m. We will go home from lunch and then go, go back to school at 2. Sometime I will stay after school and watch people play soccer. It was, it was a pretty big school. There were many, there were maybe 3,000 people there. It was first through 10th uh, first through 10th grade. I like to go, I like to go into school, but I did not like the, the teacher so much. They will, they will just stay if you do 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 your homework, and they will hit you. Sometimes you will. You will have to run around the school. I used to do that a lot. <laughs> we, had, we had to pay money for school. Fourth grade cost me 200 baht for one gym. I started going to school after fourth grade because it was too expensive. It was hard, it's hard, it was hard to find money. There were, there were great, great, Many jobs that if you had a job, you had to work two days to get to work. Mama and my dad will make only 30 to 50 baht a day. There were, there were other places I had to go. There were many churches there. There are also missionaries, a lot of churches and missionaries are in the camp. East Cheshire, we had different churches. I went to the church a lot. There were also a library and hospital then. 
I will go to the library a lot and read stories a lot. I like to read funny stories and books about history. I read a lot about about other cultures history. That was kind kind of hard in the cap. The, there was not a lot of food. Sometimes I would sneak off the cab with my friends and go off to the forest to find some food. Sometimes we would find vegetables and sometimes we would hurt animals. <coughs> we, would, we would see many animals like birds, deer, and squirrels. If you stay in the forest, it was crazy. It was dangerous. I saw a lot of snakes in the forest, like cobras. I also saw a water snake. The snake could kill you. If they buy you, you were, were going to die. When I first saw the snake, I would run away. <laughs> My parents decided to, to cut to USA. USA. They wanted to cut to here to have a better life. And they want me to have a better life and better future. People from the UN came to the camp and told us we could apply to to come to US. They had us to figure out how to apply to camp. All of my family went went to interview. After the interview, we stayed in the camp for three months. Then there there was a body check to make sure we were healthy. We let we let we all let together. First, we had to take a car to town. We stay we stay for one week, and then we took another bus to Bangkok. We stay one night in a hotel. Then we went then we went to airport. We took airplane from Thailand to Japan. Thailand to Japan. Japan to New York. We stay one night in New York. Then we took. We took another play, New York to Minnesota. When we arrived in St. Paul, my kids worker and my father friends were with it in the airport. The kids worker took me to the apartment of my father friends. And we stayed there for one week. My father's friends came to help us a little bit when we first came to America and where we where we moved to our apartment. The case worker gave my family a bed and a bed and some other stuff. He gave my parents some food and some money. After one week, after one week in the apartment, the case worker got us a new apartment. We stayed in the in their apartment for seven months. After that we left because there were there were another apartment there was with my other family. There are a lot of my people in the new apartment. The first day in Minnesota were strange. Everything was known. This place was different from my home country. I had I had not seen a refrigerator <laughs> before. There were a lot of cars. People had a lot of different kinds. There was a lot of tumbility and traffic. The first time I I saw snow was in Minnesota. I lost, I lost the snow, but I didn't like the cold. I like summer more. I didn't know any any English before came to America. I spoke a lot. I spoke a little bit Burmese and Korean. Oh, and then I learned English in US. When I first saw Korean people here, I feel happy. Some of my neighborhoods are from the sea camp. We are, we are to the, we all came to Minnesota at different time where our interviews passed. Two family members are in Minnesota. They live, they live close to us. My uncle and cousin are still there in the camp we were. They still get to talk to us on the phone. I would like to go, go back to visit Thailand and see them. I am a senior in high school. I have been in high school for four years. 
my favorite subject is a writing a writing i like to write journals i play of i play of different sport but i like soccer i like soccer the most <laughs> on the weekend i i go to movie theater sometimes i just stay home and watch movies and eat <laughs> we watch american mo american movie and chinese couple movies us when when I know it's at school, I like to fishing. When when we go fishing, uh, we caught a lot of fish. In the future, I, I will stay in Saint Paul. After I finish high school, I, I say I, I will go to college. Then I want to be a mechanic. I want to be a mechanic because I want to have I want to have my own business. When I can have my, when I can have the people in my neighborhood, I want to have, I want to have a place where my people have son, someone to talk, from, to, to talk from him with their parents. Thank you. My name is Yomiyu. I grew up in a town called Ginji in Oromia region. It's in Ethiopia. It's close to our capital city, Addis Ababa, and it's a small town. I lived there for 18 years with my parents and my siblings. The town is very small, so I know many of the people in there. We were very close. I went to school there until, until grade 10, and I had a lot of friends. We went to school together since we were children because we only had one school and uh, I really had a good time there. My family was really supportive even though life wasn't perfect. My, par my parents took care of me and uh, all of my brothers and sisters and uh, they gave us what every child needs. Other than going, going to school, I played with my friends we went to church. There, there, most of them are Orthodox Christian, and we practiced in a church. Also, I helped my mom at home doing things like cooking, cleaning, and helping my brothers with studying. I'm not the one who, decide, who decided to come here. My dad came before us in 2011 because of my uncle. Then he, stay, he, he stayed here. I thought he would come back, but he told us that he decided to stay here and bring his family. Then he started the process. I just remember back after a year or something that he informed us that we are ready to come here. At that time, I was really excited because I knew a little about this country. I was, I was sure that my dreams could come true. And I felt like, yes, I can be the kind of person I want to be. Because in Ethiopia, even if you have a degree or education, it was it's really hard to find the job you want. And the political situation is not very good. My family wasn't accepted or liked because they didn't like the government and the government didn't give us the right human beings should have, such as the right thing to speak, and to do what we wanted to do. Many people have been killed and thrown in prison because they opposed the administration. My parents always wanted us to have a better and a brighter future. That's why my dad decided to bring us here. I was really happy when he informed us, but it wasn't enough for all of us. Five of my siblings are still in Ethiopia. After our process started, I thought it would be finished very soon, but it took a while. We were kind of stressed because, as I said, my town is very small and everyone knew that we we're going to come to the United States. So, so when it took a while there, there were a lot of challenges. Everybody asked us why, 
Why? What happened to your process? Why is your father not coming back? It was really stressful, and everyone asked a question, and it, it affected us. Our school, too. Our school knew, too, and that I was going to come here. I started to get low on my grades, and I didn't like as much as I do. I did it in elementary school. A lot of things pushed me down, and that was very bad. And the, the embassy called us, and they said we are uh, permissioned, and and then we were we were was re I was really excited. They gave us our visa. Then after a month, we packed everything, and we came here. It wasn't very happy for me because I had to leave a lot of things there, like my sibling, my niece, my nephews, my grandparents, and our our village. I traveled with my mom and uh, four of my siblings. When we traveled to come to the United States, our uncle was with us. He came to the he came to Ethiopia for vacation. He lives here. He was with us, so we were very confused at the airport. He was the one who opened this ab big opportunity for us, and using this opportunity, I would like to thank him. It was a little bit scary on the plane because it was my first time, but it wasn't as I expected. It was good. We traveled with our uncle and he helped us with what we had to do at the airport. First, we landed to Washington, D.C., and our second plane landed to Minneapolis. I thought there would be a few people like my dad and some of my relatives, but when I landed here, there were a lot of people. I was really happy when I saw my dad after five years. I was surprised by a lot of things. Before we came, my dad told us what, we, it, what, it, what it was going to be like. He said, it might be not how you expected. It's not how I expected also. You know, when people say the United States, my mind thinks like something like heaven or something. <laughs> but there are a lot of obstacles here that I have to go through. He told us about the weather. When I came here, it wasn't very cold, but it was for me. <laughs> but after a, month or after a month, the winter started. The winter was really hard. The second challenging thing was the language. I understand a little bit, but it was hard for me to speak up. One day I was on a train and someone asked me something. I don't remember what it was. And I was trying to respond, but my English wasn't perfect and the people who sat behind me kind of laughed. I, then I went home and cried. I said, how can I go to school? How can I face this country? But I, I went to go to school. I'm going to go to school now. It's not that hard now. I'm get, it's getting better for me. I have been here for one year and four months. Now I go to Leap High School. I was very scared because this was my first time dealing with different people, but it wasn't hard because our school is very diverse. They put me in a, a little upper level and I was kind of scared. English challenged me, but after a few months, I'm getting better and better. Now, I don't have any extra things to do like I don't have a job. I mostly stay at home. On the weekend, I go to church. I help my families at home. They work, and I help them by cooking, cleaning. I participate in, in different leadership program. Last year, I was in leadership uh, called Jigal. This year, I'm in leadership program called Use Leadership Initiative. Right now, something I want to do is focus on my school and I get good grades. That's what I want. I love science. I want to become a pediatrician. I love children, so I want to work with them. In our country, the health care is not good. We don't have enough nutrition. I believe every child needs good food and a good education. After I finish high school, I want to go to college. Then after a year of experience, I want to go back home 
and I want to work in health area, especially with children, not only in Ethiopia, but in different places as much as I can. Thank you. My writing experience was hard because it was my first time doing or be writing especially about myself and uh, it's scary like sometimes you thought your story is not good enough and I was scared people won't like my stories and I was scared but my teachers helped me and uh, the co-authors all also like they inspired me also when I heard their story I want to do I want I wanted to do my story also yeah what I wanted to do is like to show that our experience as immigrants and that, that we live through a lot of things but we migrated to this country not because we hate our country or we just need a better future life and uh, everyone has an inspiring and a lovable story that's one and I want everyone to hear us. <laughs> Alip helped me a lot because in Leap High School, we got a lot of, uh, it's very diverse school, and we're from different countries, and uh, when I see other culture, other people, the way they're living, and uh, it helped me that our culture is beautiful, that helped me to know more about the world. Yeah, what I, what I wanna say is that don't be afraid to speak out and that your story is important and uh, it can inspire and change someone's life. So tell about your story and uh, just be confident on yourself. This means like, a great thing for me because I get to see a lot of things, I get to see a lot of, uh, meet a lot of people and uh, it's one of the big experiences that I had in my life and uh, it helped me that to know about myself more, to see other people. I'm really grateful to have this opportunity. I feel really happy and excited to see other other people came here and support immigrants and to get you know us and ask a lot of questions to share your story to other people and if other people know your story so they know what what's going on and if they know who you are they know your problem i mean you know when they read your book Lee, Lee have done many things from this you know like the, the the teacher like they help me whenever i need help she say don't be afraid uh don't worry about your english just do what you do and do what you love to do. And she said it's okay to make a mistakes yeah. because everyone makes mistakes. So she said, yeah. I would tell them, like, go and tell your story to other people. Yeah, they, will, they will listen to your story and get to know you. As a writing teacher in uh, St. Paul Public Schools for English learners, I get to write with them all the time, creative and academically. And I am fortunate enough to be able to learn their individual stories when many others are not able to. And so to be able to see them do all of this journaling and creative writing in class for me and all of these conversations that we have where we really become a very close-knit family, a very strong community in our class. And to watch them tonight present uh, their stories in front of a group of strangers in a place they've never been before. It's no different than the feeling that a mother has for her own children when she sees them performing on stage. And they have just come so far in terms of their confidence and how they know that their stories as refugees and immigrants are important. And they are giving so much to our district. They're giving so much to our society. And when we see these kids, these families, these people on the streets that look or sound um, or believe in different things than what we grew up with, start a conversation because they are interesting and they have gifts that can be shared and they have the right to be here and they're not going anywhere. And so I just am, I'm proud like a mother's proud of watching their children.